Hey, how you doing? So this video is actually going to be a little bit different to what I normally do. I want to actually talk a little bit about my story of how I got into software development. And I really want to talk about how I massively struggled with imposter syndrome for many, many, many years, but that how I eventually reached a point where I transitioned from just doing a manual software testing job right straight through to being a principal engineer all within three years. You know what? I don't want to record this video at my desk. I'm just going to go and get comfy in the chair behind me. Let's go and move over there. So yeah, I left university around 2002, I think it was, um, and I left with a nice shiny computer science degree, had a good time at university, and I knew that obviously I wanted to go into software, and to be honest, I probably wanted to work work as a developer. The truth was though, like, when I left uni, I didn't feel anywhere near confident enough to actually go into a job writing real code for real projects. I'd done it okay at uni, but I'd struggled and I'd found it quite hard, and to be honest, like I'd really struggled, I think, with my final year project, and I just didn't feel that I had enough skill to be to write code competently. Yeah, I, and I just didn't feel confident enough to write code. And to be honest, like, this was in the days when like Google was really only just starting out. There was obviously no AI. It was quite hard for me then to like bring my coding skills up anymore from what I'd learned at uni. I really didn't feel confident. But you know, I really wanted to work in software and I'd done a computer science degree. And so I thought to myself, well, if I can't be a developer, what's the next best thing? I thought I'll be a tester. And I thought testing other people's code, that will be so much easier than writing the code yourself. Self. Well, guess what? It turns out testing code is actually probably way harder, particularly like to test code properly, but that's kind of another story. But I thought, okay, at least if I can't be a developer, I can just test the code instead and I can get, get a job into, into doing that. So I had a look around and the first job that I actually got was as a video game tester. Now, when I landed this job, I thought this was my absolute dream come true. I'm just going to get paid to play video games all day. So I worked for a company called Electronic Arts EA. They make games like FIFA, if you've heard of that, or Battle. Battlefield, lots of other like big franchise games like that. And so I thought this was fantastic. This is my dream job. This is just going to be absolutely amazing. But it actually turned out it's actually a really bloody hard job. And to be honest, it's incredibly repetitive. Like you end up just playing the same level of the same game over and over and over again. And that actually becomes really boring, really, really fast. And then I joined a company called EE. So in the UK, they're a big network, uh, mobile network company, or I should say mobile uh, telecommunications company. So I joined them on their graduate scheme and then I got put into a role where I was writing test automation and performance testing code. So though I still wasn't a developer, I still wasn't actually writing production code, I was actually writing code now that actually tested other code. And this was a great experience for me. I met a lot of really interesting people here and learned a lot of skills, particularly around test automation and performance testing, which I still use a lot of today. So I spent about three years at EE and then I left to become a full-time test consultant. So I would travel all over the UK and indeed all over the world, again, writing test automation code, helping clients implement test automation frameworks, performance testing, things like that. And it was at this time I started to really get proper experience of how software development works, so things like version control systems, things like actually deploying code to production. So even though I still wasn't strictly a developer, I wasn't writing development code, I was starting to learn the whole software development lifecycle process. But being a consultant is actually a really hard gig. Anyone who's done it will know that there's a lot of travel you're going to a lot of different client sites dealing with a wide range of problems and really after a couple of years I was burnt out with doing that I just wanted to have a job where I was just in one fixed location so it was at this time that I joined my last company which was SAP and here I was working as a software developer in test so again I was recruited to write test automation code performance test code bits and pieces like that but to be honest after a year or so I found myself back in a position where I was just doing lots of manual testing again I still wasn't really writing any code I was just doing like release verification test manually had very little opportunity to write test automation and to be honest I found myself getting incredibly frustrated again and really for me this is where I hit something of a breaking point like I felt like I'd been in software now for quite a few years I've done a lot of different roles some really challenging roles
well. It's like I traveled all over the country and indeed all over the world doing test automation, performance testing, like writing stuff that was really, really hard, really difficult and challenging. But I still wasn't a software developer. Like I was still writing test code, which was fine. I understood that had a purpose, but I was like, I really want to be a developer. Like I really want to, I was really questioning myself. Like why have I not become a developer? I've done all of these challenging roles. I've worked for lots of different companies. I've written all of this automation code, but why do I still feel that kind of fear, if you like, of not writing real application code? Like what is actually stopping me? And to be honest, like writing so much test automation code and writing code that tests other people's code, I kind of realized then that it is all in my head and that there's no reason why I can't actually become a software developer myself. So SAP is a big company and eventually a software developer position opened up and I knew that I had to apply for it and go for it. And as I say, my experience with test automation and being a consultant for many years had actually given me the confidence to think that, yes, I can actually do this now. And what surprised me the most was how much my testing background actually helped me succeed in becoming a developer. And I feel like I had something of an advantage now because I had a good idea from my experience of how systems break. I had a good idea of the sort of code and edge cases that other developers will often miss. And I knew how to think systematically about code quality. But you know what? It really wasn't technical skills alone that helped propel my rise from manual tester right up to principal engineer so quickly. And I think the real catalyst was actually something that many engineers just completely overlook. You know what? It's a beautiful day out here in the UK today. Why don't we take this outside? So you know what? Here's the uncomfortable truth that I found out in just so many organizations. There are so many brilliant engineers out there writing amazing code who never get promoted. And they never get promoted because no one knows what it is that they're doing. And I actually realized this quite early. I think it was from spending so many years as a consultant working in lots and lots of different enterprises and organizations, meeting so many amazing engineers, but so often I could just see that they weren't getting promoted. And so I realized this early, and this is where I developed something that I called a visible strategy. So despite being a massive introvert, I started doing a few different things. One thing that I started, and this is what really got me into content creation, was just creating explainer videos. So these were just internal videos that just showed how a particular piece of software worked. And I could just share these either between the team or within other teams adjacent to us or just with managers, etc. I also took it upon myself to start presenting more at things like lunch and learns and internal meetups. So just presenting whatever it was that we were working on or something that our team had accomplished. And I found that doing this like over time, it gave me more and more confidence in the work that I was doing, but it also gave me more visibility it actually showed that I was contributing. There was a piece of advice that my manager gave me that really struck a chord with me and I really took to heart. And he said, your work's only as valuable as people's awareness of it. And I don't know why, but this just really struck a chord with me. I was like, yes, of course, like that totally makes sense. It can be tempting to just plod through on work and code and just hope that you know one day someone will recognize it and that you'll get promoted from it but the truth is it really doesn't work that way like rightly or wrongly that just isn't the way that it works now was doing these things comfortable for me as an introvert no like i really really like found it hard but with things like creating content like even like creating this sort of content now i found that when you can record something when you can just do it you know a few times over and over again okay i'm starting to get a few weird looks here let's keep walking around the lake So yeah, the thing is, while visibility started to get me noticed, I still had the same problem that I still needed to rapidly build my technical skills. And this was where I started something of a three-part learning system. So the first thing I did was dedicated structured learning time each day. So I'd specify a certain number of hours each day to dedicate to learning new technologies as well as structured learning, that I also started dedicating time to building proper side projects. This could be something that we were working on either at work or it could just be like a passion project. And related to those side projects as well, another thing I would really focus on is content creation. So for me, this would be like creating courses on maybe a technology that I was learning, creating maybe some YouTube videos, blog posts, things like that. Anything to kind of just cement and document what it is that I was actually working on and learning. Of course, by creating content, it actually helps with the learning process as well. It helps you to retain knowledge. So that's a real win-win. I actually believe that these three things really helped my growth massively, particularly the 
the structured learning part. But really they all fed into each other, like the structured learning fed into the side projects, the side projects fed, fed into the content creation part as well. All right, it's getting a bit cold here, let's move on. Yeah, when it comes to structured learning and getting ideas for side projects, that's where it's really so important to choose the right platform. And that actually leads me on to educative.io, who are the partner for today's video. Now, platforms like Educative can be real game changers in your learning journey. When I was coming up, I didn't have access to their interactive learning platform, and I really wish that I did. I think what really makes Educative difference is their text-based, very much hands-on learning approach. So instead of just passively watching videos, you're actively coding along and writing real code right there in the browser. And their courses on system design and distributed systems, they're particularly valuable for engineers looking to skill up. And to be honest, I've actually found that text-based learning can be significantly better than video-based learning alone. So you can move at your own pace, you can practice specific concepts if there's something that you're particularly struggling on, and really you can just move along at your own pace. But anyway, I found Educative to be an incredible resource when it comes to learning new technology and development skills. If you're interested in learning more about them, check out the link in the description of this video, where I think you can get something like 58% off an annual subscription. So do check that out if you're interested in learning more. But beyond the structured learning, and increasing my visibility. To be honest, there was more that I did that I think helped me to get promoted so quickly. And what I did is that I actively saw leadership opportunities within my existing role. Now, these didn't need to be anything big, but I found that, for example, when we were missing a scrum master in our team, I actively took on the responsibility of doing the daily stand-ups, of running some of the agile ceremonies. Like I took ownership of, do, of managing the sprint planning and grooming the backlog. And obviously with Agile, you always have a demo every two weeks. So I really took on the responsibility of often doing that. Like I often found that in the team, people didn't really want to do the demos. And again, as I touched on before, this was a good way to increase visibility. I think probably the most valuable question that I started asking myself is, what problems need solving that no one else really wants to address? And this kind of mindset shift from just doing my job to actually solving either the company's problems or the problems that the team were having, to be honest, that kind of changed everything. So within a year of transitioning to develop from my testing role, I was promoted to a senior engineer. And then just 18 months later, I reached principal level at my company. Now, was there some luck involved in that? Absolutely, there was. I'm not naive enough to think that I wasn't incredibly lucky and that, you know, I wasn't in the right place at the right time. But that luck only materialized because I'd made the effort to put myself in the position where those sort of opportunities could find me. And honestly, my testing background gave me a really unique perspective on how to build robust systems and how to handle a lot of different coding challenges. My visibility strategy, so that ensure that managers and decision makers at the company, they knew about my contributions already. And the learning habits that I'd adopted, I mean, they really kept me ahead of the technology curve. Now, I've since left my company to become a freelance content creator, but I really think that the skills that I've gained in my many years in engineering, particularly at that sort of level, have really helped me to get to where I am today. So if I could distill this journey into actionable advice for you, it would be this. Number one is don't underestimate your current skills. So if you've got a non-traditional background like I had, that can actually be a huge advantage to you. You just have to find a way that you can use it. Number two is make your work visible. I know particularly as introverts, we sometimes find it hard to blow our own trumpet, but it's so important to just get your work out there so that it can be understood and appreciated by others. Number three is learn strategically and just focus on learning new technologies that are interesting to you, that are up and coming, and that are gonna be, that you know are gonna be useful in this space. Again, there's lots of learning platforms out there, whether that's educative or otherwise, that can really help you with this. Number four is take initiative before you have permission. So this just means taking on a bit more responsibility. It doesn't have to be anything massive, like it could just be offering to run a certain meeting or do a certain admin task. These things, like they kind of snowball and they really add up and they can really help you in the long run. And number five, like I always say, is create content. Like it's so important these days to create content. Taking that time to teach others, it really cements your own understanding as well. There's just so many benefits to it as I'm always talking about on this channel. Anyway, I'm starting to come up to the end of my walk now, but I'm hoping that sharing these experiences can help you in your own journey. Whether you're a tester wanting to get into a development role or a developer wanting to accelerate your career, remember that your trajectory isn't fixed. Perhaps you want to leave your development role and become a content creator or a freelancer, kind of like what I'm doing. As I've talked about in other videos, there's lots of different paths out there now. The world of technology is really changing quite rapidly. But I'd love to hear about your own career journey in the comments down below. So what's been your biggest challenge or breakthrough? through or what is it that you're struggling with now and please don't just say it's AI that's going to replace you. 
I've heard that way too many times and it's just not true. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos about software engineering and technology. And check out educative.io using my link below to supercharge your learning. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.